Hey, what's going on? Pilots Tricker here, and today we are going over the F-16, specifically an ILS or instrument landing system approach. So I hope you're all enjoying the new clouds, because I sure am with the new presets, especially the overcast and rain presets. And that's what we're going to demonstrate here today. We are in a rainstorm coming into Nellis. Visibility and cloud later are too low for an approach, for a visual approach, that is. So we need to go ahead and do an instrument or precision guided approach into Nellis Air Force Base so we can go ahead and land. So let's go ahead and get right into it. We're going to go right to the chart for the ILS 21 left into Nellis. So here's the approach chart ILS for runway 21 left into Nellis Air Force Base. You always read the chart from left to right, starting from the top left. First thing we want to make sure, though, is the date is dated correctly, 25 March 2021 to 22 April of 2021. So that is the current chart as of right now. And starting on the top left, low glasser frequency 1091. We need that one. And 209 is the inbound course or the approach course. So we need both of these numbers. These are both the important numbers for the ILS approach. Continuing on, we have runway 21 left, which has an ALS F1 approach lighting system and the missed approach procedure which you need to know in case you have to go around due to the tower telling you to go around or because you cannot see the runway. All the next important things here are the localizer frequency here on the pictorial as well as the Nellis LSV channel 12 x-ray TACAN channel which is what we're going to be putting into the DED here in just a few moments. Next is the elevation of the airfield which was 1869 feet and we are category D or Delta aircraft so our minimums are 200 feet or one half statue a mile visibility. Now we're gonna be starting here at about 7,000 feet on active pause and the descent down to 5,000 feet. And we're gonna go ahead and put in the localizer frequency, the course, the tack in, make sure we change the mode to PLS nav and go over just a few other things before we uh, start flying the approach. So remember we're gonna be at 7,000 feet on active pause and we're gonna be descending to 5,000 feet just outside of sheet intersection so we're going to be crossing sheet at or above 5,000 feet and then intercepting the glide slope from there. Now, just remember in real life, we always try to come in at about 45 degree angle. Every approach is never the same because ATC is always giving you different altitudes, air speeds, and intercepting at different uh, intersections or different parts of the approach. So you're not always going to go to the instrument approach fix. So let's stop wasting time and let's go ahead and get into the jet. All right, welcome pilots to the uh, cockpit of the F-16. We're currently leaving 7,000 feet for 5,000 feet like we talked about on the approach. And what we're trying to simulate here is like a realistic approach doing an ILS into a uh, terminal area. So we are on active pause at the moment because we need to set just a few things up first. And usually before you get to this point, you already have everything set up and you're already briefed and ready to go. So the first things we're going to do here first is click on ILS on the ICP, which is number one. So we're going to left click number one. It brings up the ILS information and TACAN information on the DED on the right hand side. And it says TACAN receive ILS on. Now if it says ILS off, this is probably what happened. Your ILS knob down here is off and it says off right here. So if this is off, please make sure you turn this on. So it says ILS on. Now. We're going to click sequence to the right once on the ICP and that changes the tack in from uh, receive to transmit receive and we want it in transmit receive so we get bearing and range information. Now going over the chart 12 x-ray is the Nellis tack in so we're going to type in 12 and hit enter and you can see right here 12 x-ray is LSV or Lima Sierra vector so that has been identified and that is correct. So we can turn down the tack in so we don't have to listen to the annoying Morse code. And we'll go ahead and dob her down twice to frequency. And we're going to put in 109.10. Hit enter. This is the frequency for 21 left. Now if we go to course and type in 209, hit enter. So this is all set up right now for the ILS 21 left into Nellis Air Force Base with the 12 X-ray tack in. And right there, we're going to go ahead and turn down the ILS as well. Make sure you don't turn it off, but we're going to turn it down so we don't have to listen to the Morse code. The Morse code you're hearing is what's associated on the chart. You're supposed to match the Morse code with what's on the chart with what you hear in your ears to make sure you're going to the right uh, place or right localizer, right glide slope. So that's been identified. Next, what we need to do is come down here to the mode, change the mode to PLS nav mode. You can see the CDI needles are right here. 
We are currently right of course. And we need to hit 209, which has been set in the DED. So this is automatically set, 209. And this is the CDI right here. So we're going to intercept this right here. As you can see on the HUD, we have a glide slope for the horizontal bar. It's dashed right now because we're outside of parameters. It'll become solid here in just a little bit. And we have a vertical line here, which is the localizer. So we'll go ahead and unpause here, descend on down to 5,000 feet. We'll keep it under 300 knots here. No need to rush. And yeah, we'll talk about a couple other things here in just a moment. So in order to get this kind of weather, I had to choose the rain and weather or rain and overcast uh, preset in order to get it to work properly. Um, because right now the fog and the uh, dust layer don't really work correctly at the moment with the new presets. So I had to choose the rain and overcast. Now it does sound realistic to me, but it is a little bit loud. And sometimes when you're out, outside of the clouds, um, you know, you still get the rain sound effect even though you're not in the rain. So anyway, like I said, we're going down to 5,000 feet. So we're looking for that. When you level off at 5,000 feet, you can use the autopilot if you wish. Put an altitude hold if you want. Or you can just trim. This is usually a really uh, realistic kind of approach here with the ILS because they usually bring you in about 45 degrees. And it's always at different altitudes, different airspeeds. They want you to intercept the localizer. It's always changing. And... They don't always bring you to the initial approach fix. Sometimes they send you directly to the outer marker or an in-between fix. And that's what we're trying to simulate here is we're not doing the initial approach fix or the whole entire ILS. We're just doing what is usually a realistic ILS approach here. So we're approaching 5,000 feet and we're going to go ahead and level off here. Wait for the CDI needles to come alive so we can go ahead and intercept the localizer. So here in just a second, the vertical bar on the left here is going to start moving to the right, which is the localizer. And basically we want to track the localizer inbound all the way to 2-1 left. So you can look down here, CDI needles are coming alive, localizer's alive. Go ahead and start a right hand turn to intercept the localizer. Make sure we stay above 5,000 feet. We're looking good here, we don't want to overshoot the localizer. If you should overshoot the localizer, that's okay. It happens all the time in real life. as long as you start tracking the localizer as soon as possible. Same thing with the glide slope. You don't want to get below the glide slope. If you do, try to correct as soon as possible because you don't want to be below the glide slope. So remember, we're going to be above 5,000 feet. So we're level here. Let's go into active pause real quick. So we're currently at 5,000 feet. We are centered on the localizer. As you can see right here, it's right in the middle. The glide slope now became solid. That means we're within parameters and it's going to start coming down. And when it comes down and intercepts and makes a cross, we're going to go ahead and start descending down and follow the three degree glide path all the way down to the runway. So we're currently 12.7 miles away from the Tachyon. And at 13.2 was the intersection, intersection uh, sheet and sheet was at or above 5,000 feet, according to the chart. So we are cleared to descend via the glide slope uh, when we start intercepting it. So this is, like I said, this is usually a realistic scenario right here. They don't always send you down to 4,200 feet. Sometimes they have you intercept at 6,000, 7,000, what have you. So we're on the localizer, glide slope's alive, it's coming down, we're gonna intercept it and follow it down and put the gear down as well here in just a moment. Active pause is off. The 
Here comes the glide slope. We are now intercepting the glide slope. And I'm coming back on the power, pushing the nose over. Because I want to form that cross in the flight path marker. Now remember, you want easy, smooth corrections. You don't want anything drastic here. You do not want anything drastic. So we're currently going just a little bit right. So the look lines are telling us to go left. So we're going to move just a little bit to the left here. Re-intercept. Currently about 8 miles away. Gears coming down. I'm going to go ahead and raise the seat just a little bit. There we go. So the gear is down 3 green. We are on speed. Getting just a little below the glide slope there. Not much. We'll just correct that. Add a little bit of power. Pitch up. There we go. Like I said, we're following the following the needles here. Looking for that perfect little cross. We're on speed. Re-intercepting the glide slope again. We're going to push the nose over just a little bit here. Not too much. Because remember, the, the closer you get to the needles, or sorry, the closer you get to the airfield, the more sensitive the needles are going to be. And you don't want to be chasing the needles because, uh, and trust me, I've seen it a lot in, you know, in real life. Once you get close to these uh, airports, the needles become very sensitive. And if you start chasing them all over the place, they're going to lead you in bad directions. So smooth, small corrections here. So we're just a little bit above the glide slope. Pushing it over just a little bit here. Speed brakes are out. Gears down three green. So we have the runway environment site, so we can go ahead and switch to a visual landing from here if we want to, or you can continue following the needles. So right there we have a nice little cross on the uh, localizer and glide slope. Continuing on down, 200 feet, so radar altimeter right there on the right. So 200 feet, there we go, that's our minimum. We have the runway environment site, we're going to go ahead and land. We do not need to go around. Start our flare. Power's coming back. There we go. Extend the speed brakes all the way. An arrow brake here. Let the nose come down. And apply the brakes smoothly here. Again, this is just a short video for the ILS on the F-16. Now, I can go super in-depth with this. That would take many videos. But this is just a brief, short guide to try to point you in the right direction on how to do an ILS. There's plenty of great YouTube videos out there from other uh, pilots that talk about how to do an ILS. And they break it down very well. This is just a very basic guide for the ILS for the F-16. So hopefully you enjoyed. If you want me to do some more in-depth stuff here for the F-16 on the ILS or any other aircraft, let me know. And again, thanks for all your support. Really appreciate all the support lately. Stay safe out there and fly safe. We'll see you on the next one.